This week on Conestoga Connected. Will we be saying hasta la vista to manual cameras? The Tech Talk crew find out as they visit Rogers and Kitchener to talk robotic cameras. Joel and Boyan try to escape punishment this week on Pain and Game as they work together to complete an escape room. And this week's Wrap It Up packs a punch as Morgan interviews upcoming rapper PM Punch, aka Diggy Doom. All this and more coming up on Conestoga Connected. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Conestoga Connected. I'm Boyan and Mia's over here doing something with candles. Mia, what's, what's going on? Diwali. Do what? This week, Tried to Connect decided to step into Hindu culture and find out exactly what Diwali really is. Okay. Let's join him. Being in a country with a different culture is very intimidating. But thankfully, in Canada, we're very open and accepting of different cultures. The celebration of Diwali is a perfect example. Sneha Patel provided some background on the five-day holiday. So Diwali is a Hindu festival of lights. It is the celebration of good over evil, lightness over darkness. It is a five-day festival and it is a very traditional, the most important event of the year for all Hinduisms. And it is celebrated all over the world. Suhani Patel gives us some insight on what happens in the five days of Diwali. First day is the day of fortune, the second day is the day of knowledge, which is followed by the day of lights, that is a Diwali. And then comes the new year. The last is the day of the love between siblings, that is a brother and sister, which is commonly known as Bhai Dooj. A unique part of Diwali is a Rangoli. Her Patel describes the traditional art. Uh, then we have something called rangoli, which one of my favorite and my sister's favorite things to do. It's an art with colored sand, and you make flower designs, or sometimes related to goddess Lakshmi, or uh, different gods that are in our culture. Another big part of Diwali is, of course, the food. Food, such as sweets, which is called mithai, and savory snacks such as matya. They are very popular foods for Hinduism. The Try to Connect crew enjoyed some matya and other treats. A great ending to a great holiday. I wonder what through the lens looked at this week. I heard they found another great $10 lens. I don't know where they keep finding these deals from. What? Wow, $10, that's even less than my lunch cost today. <laughs> Hello, my name is Andrew McFarland. I'm here for episode 3 of Through the Lens, where we'll be looking at the Tokina 135mm f3.5. The 135mm focal length helps produce a shallow depth of field, isolating your subject. It's also useful for getting up close to subjects that would normally be out of reach. To test it out, we met with Brandon Nguyen and Adelina Rivas. My name is Brandon Nguyen and I am a co-founder at Compass9 Media. We run a marketing agency there that specializes in social media marketing. My name is Adelina Rivas, and right now I'm currently working at a media company called Ward One Studios. Uh, so my experience with modeling is I recently started a clothing line called Urban Visionary, and so I really had to put myself out there. I had to go ahead and model for my own clothing line. So I normally shoot with a Sony a7 III. No, I have not used the Venture lens. I'm really open-minded to experimenting with different things. In the beginning, it was a little hard kind of figuring out the mechanics of it, but um, the more I used it, the more uh, I really liked it. So my favorite picture was when um, Adelina was next to the red leaves. I think uh, capturing the, you know, the bright colors and her dark coat was a really good contrast. 
I was very surprised when I found out the lens costed $10. Um, very inexpe inexpensive and um, I loved it, yeah. Wow, that lens is really cool. Makes me want to get back behind the scenes again, you know? We are behind the scenes in our control room. More and more cameras are becoming remote operated in TV studios. You might want to stick to hosting. Wow, okay. Well, the guys from Tech Talk went to Rogers TV to learn how robotic cameras work. Hey guys, welcome to Tech Talk. Today, we're at Rogers TV to see what goes on behind the camera at a broadcasting station. Let's go check it out. Neil White is a producer at Rogers TV Kitchener. I had a wide range of experiences here working at Rogers TV. I've gotten to do all sorts of things. I've done studio productions, I've done mobile productions, I've done ENG productions, which is more cameras in the field. Um, so I've had all sorts of um, experiences. White proceeded to give us a short overview of the robotic cameras. Uh, these are our robotic cameras that we use in um, this studio here in Kitchener and also in some of our other studios as well. Compact, um, well, simple pieces when you look at them, but they are um, pretty powerful technology. Um, everything comes over a single data line, uh, which runs back up to the control room. There's a small control surface you'll see up there. Um, it can control each camera individually. It can uh, pre-program in positions for them. So for example, uh, you can set it, uh, you can pan, tilt, zoom, iris, white balance, all of that, those adjustments can be made from the control panel. Advancements in tech have affected the way a TV studio is run. Jordan Gruber is the community engagement specialist at Rogers TV Kitchener. I hear it time and again from volunteers that they love actually operating a camera rather than using the robotic interface. Robotic cameras definitely have their benefits, uh, but overall, the you, you just you can't beat actually controlling the zoom and the pan and the tilt on a on a physical camera. No matter what innovations come along, the heart of broadcast television remains the same. I'm Connor McMillan for Conestoga Connected. So, boy, on word around the studio is that you're pretty good at Smash Bros. Yeah, I mean, I can beat Thomas if I play Peach. <laughs> want to bet? I do want to bet. What do you want to play? Well, how about right here at the den at Conestoga? The press play guys okay. went there to see the college's own gimme hotspot. That's amazing. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Press Play, where this week we're checking out the den on Conestoga College's campus. Let's take a look. I remember just walking in and just seeing like everything, just like how chill it was. It was just like a hangout space. It was not school. It was just all about like sitting down, relaxing, kicking back. And I just walked in. I was just like, how have I not seen this place before, you know? Thomas Strybosch says once he found out about the place, he couldn't stop coming back. Ever since I started the PSI program, this has always been where me and my friends go. We just decided to go one day, foosball, all that, almost every day after class. We even asked him his honest opinions on the location. Really casual, uh, easy to get into, inviting, uh, very open space. You can just kind of do your own thing, show up with a laptop, study if you want, uh, rent out consoles. It's pretty good. How do you feel about a split screen co-op, especially this is a huge place focused on stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. And online gaming has just become such a, a big thing that they think it's almost sort of the only thing that can help Yeah, it's it. nice that it brings, that this kind of forces you to bring it back down a level, you know, make it more local, more engaged with other people rather than just, you know, headset on, mic on, nothing. Um, it's nice. It's, it's a nice throwback to, to my childhood. Then we asked Erna Wine if he found the space relaxing. Oh yeah, definitely. If you like really struggling with projects and stuff and just need like a place just to like kick off steam and stuff, this is like the perfect place to do it because like not only like can you come here with friends, but you can come here to make friends. And that's the den. If you're coming to Conestoga College anytime soon, you might want to check it out. Who knows, you might even make some friends. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Press Play. We'll see you next time. So, uh, how did the escape room go? Oh, you know, it was pretty good. Hmm. Sounds to me like you lost. Hey, I never said that. We could have won. 
You don't know. You didn't see it. Let's find out then. Yeah, let's do it. Hey guys, we're here at Complex Rooms in Waterloo to do the locked-in time escape room. Yeah, wish us luck because these things are not easy, okay, but not. we got this. Let's go. Let's do it. Right. Well, today you guys are playing a traditional escape room, so your goal is to get out of the space through a door you did not enter through. Right. Heading to the escape room. Okay, I promise. <laughs> Good luck. Actually, well, we have three rooms right now. This is our newest room, and it's our trickiest room. When you watch the same room for months at a time, I always joke it's like watching the same movie, but with different actors. I like the, the movie yeah. end game up here. 12 Monkeys, Groundhog Day, Looper, also a movie. Also a time travel movie is Source Code, nice. I was with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, I love that. Just the back to the future. Hey, listen to, I don't care about your... Sorry. Donnie Darko. I don't, what's our objective right now? Uh, so we've been open for two years now. There's four of us, four owners. We've done about 40 escape rooms as a team. Uh, absolutely love the experience, problem solving, uh, work really well together. And after one night uh, eating nachos, we decided, you know what, we, we can do this and we can add something to the industry. With only two people, I think the chances of getting out of the room is slim. Uh, but hey, look like smart guys. What? 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 <laughs> My mind's like boggled, I don't know. There's so many different things. Double check your second number. Joel. What, it's 10? Plus nine. I'm Jesus, bro, <laughs> Jesus, man. I hate you, bro. If that's not it, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use my brain right now. There's, a, there's 40 seconds left. Hey, good, good effort, man. Good effort, bro. Okay, so we lost as a team, uh, so which means we get punished as a team. Yeah. Anyway, so Riley, our cameraman, decided we should do a shot of hot sauce. Great. So. Thank you. <coughs> you know hot sauce gets hot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Okay, that's it. We're done. We're done. Did you know that the word vegan was coined in 1944? Wow. No, I did not. Mm. However, the World Food Now crew recently went to Cafe Pirates to try some out. Hey, welcome to World Food Now. Like always, I'm Chris Paisley. And today we're trying some vegan food here in downtown Kitchener at Cafe Pyrus. Although not particularly associated with any one society, there are approximately 850,000 vegans in Canada. Alex Halladin is Pyrus's chef, and he explains the challenges of being a vegan restaurant. Kind of, I think the biggest challenge is convincing customers what to try. Like, um, you can play with flavors, with spices a lot, and you can make something really tasty. But sometimes it's just, you have to break that mental barrier of what do I actually want to pay for? And However, Tyson James, the owner of Cafe Pyrus, says that there is more to Cafe Pyrus than just the food. We're going to treat our employees with respect. We treat our customers with respect. But that also extends out to environment and to our supply chain. So yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive than a Tim Hortons. But what you're doing is you're having a social impact and people are buying in. Whether that be vegan or not, here's a way for you to try and, and really make a big impact. One of the ways Cafe Pyrus is making a larger impact is by sourcing food locally. So there's tons of local food around here. And especially if you live in downtown Kitchener, you have access to the Kitchener Market. You have places like Legacy Greens. Um, we have a ton of CSAs. We have a strong connection. The Working Center has a full organic farm. So we have a strong connection to the food that's grown here. Now we are ready to eat. But before we begin, our chef Alex Halladin explains his creations. The taco salad here, it's one of our items that's got beans in it. It's got our house-made guacamole. Our uh, angry vegan, it's got our tempeh in it. It's got an artichoke spread that, um, artichoke's another thing people might not normally use, but it's, it's delicious. You can find Cafe Pyrus at 16 Charles Street West, Kitchener. For Constantly Connected, I'm Chris Paisley. Well, is that it for us? Yeah, I think so. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Um, okay, well, stay tuned. Amy and Eric will be here for the rest of the show. Um, Mia, hold on, wait for me. Don't, don't go without me. Next on Conestoga Connected, follow Zena and Sasha to Heidelberg Restaurant and Tavern to find out what interesting dish they tried this time and maybe learn a bit about the restaurant history while you're at it.
What are the hosts of Pain and Game doing on Next Level Nostalgia? Join Skylar as he challenges Joel and Boyan to find out how well they know their 90s music. Make sure to stay tuned in to see which rapper mixes 80s rock, jazz, and gospel hip-hop. All this and more coming up next. Welcome back to Conestoga Connected. I'm Amy McGuire. And I'm Eric Hansen. we got a great second half for you guys with stories from around the region. Ain't that right, Amy? That's right. And we're going to start off by getting extreme on Eat the Extreme, where Zena and Sasha eat something you'd never think to order. Hey, welcome to Eat, eat the extreme. extreme. I'm Zena. And I'm Sasha, and we're at Heidelberg Restaurant and Tavern. We'll be frying pig tail and pig feet. Let's get going! As Sasha goes to meet and greet customers to find out their opinions, I'll meet up with the owner to learn more about the restaurant. My name is Gail McMillan. My husband Bob and I own the Heidelberg Restaurant. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit about the restaurant? The restaurant, the building itself, is over 150 years old. It was originally a stagecoach stop. It's been owned by different owners over the years. My husband and I have been here 33 years. Uh, well, how often do you would say that people actually order uh, pig tail or pig feet? So we have pig's tails and we have pork hock, which oh, okay. a lot of people refer to as the pig's feet. Okay. Um, we go through a lot, yes, every day. Let's go hear what the customers have to say. I had pig tails and mashed potatoes and uh, carrots. Mm. Apparently it's been here for quite a few years. Well, you were coming when you were in <laughs> university. Yeah. Because this was the place to hang out. <laughs> Make sure to challenge your friends to a game of shuffleboard as you wait for your meal. Well, this is the pigtail dinner. Smoked pork pot, which some people refer to as pig feet. It's time for the main event. Okay. Beauty. Wow. I have to say, I wasn't expecting it to be sweet, but I like it. It's really soft. Okay, so on to the pig hot. Let's okay. try it. In three, two, one. I love it. Overall, I love the pigtail more. Like, I adored the pigtail. Okay, so I think it's time to rate the food. Extremeness of the hawk, I would say just one. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. So for pigtail, I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah, three. I would rate it four. Okay, so thanks for watching. I will see you next time on Eat the Extreme. Hey Eric, I'm so glad that hockey season has started up again. I don't know what I would have done without it. Really? I've been thinking of playing this year. You should join me. I don't know if I can afford this. How much, how much is this equipment? Well, let's go to our Sports Uncovered team to show us how expensive it really is to play. Welcome to Sports Uncovered, where we discuss issues that are present in sports. Everybody knows that hockey is the national winter sport of Canada, but do you know how expensive it is to gear up for the season? This week, we open the doors on the cost of hockey. Participation in youth hockey has been on a decline in recent years. Kelsey Van Wymeren, head coach of the Norwich Nighthawks midget rep team, believes it could be due to the rising cost of the game. You can definitely see the, the numbers in registration are definitely down. Um, in the past years because equipment is getting more expensive. It's a lot harder for kids to, to get into the sport because, because of the cost implications there. It puts a strain, you're, you're paying probably three, four hundred dollars just to play hockey and then you have a couple grand worth of equipment on so it, it really does add up. Sticks can be $350 while skates are over a thousand. This pales in comparison to goalie equipment which can be more than a few thousand dollars. A program called Hockey for Everyone out of Tilsonburg is trying to alleviate this issue for kids wanting to try the sport. Through donations and through fundraising by the Club Oxford Hockey League, uh, we're able to pay for the ice time, uh, the equipment, and uh, provide qualified instruction. There's, there's three or four teachers involved in, in the instruction of these kids, and so they get a good introduction to the game of hockey. You can register at the Tilsonburg Community Center or donate equipment at either Vern's Carpet One or All Season Sports Exchange in Tilsonburg. Uh, just trying to give back to a community that's given a lot to uh, me and my family, especially through the arena. And uh, yeah, this gives these kids an opportunity to try Canada's game at, uh, at no cost, uh, which is a, a huge factor. 
Although playing hockey is a fun and rewarding way to spend your childhood, the price tag alone can eliminate one of the next greats from playing at a young age. For Conestoga Connected and Sports Uncovered, I'm Taylor Van Weiner. Amy, why are you drawing on me? What have I ever done to you, man? Uh, I'm just practicing for when I start tattooing. Oh, really? Well, we should probably leave that to the good artists, which is what our group at Trying checks out this week at another great spot. Let's see. We're here at the Exotic Skin Shop, and we're going to talk to Susie about her style of tattooing. On the busy King Street in downtown Kitchener, the Exotic Skin Shop sits on the corner, a small shop with a big heart. Susie Salick, who has always considered herself an artist first and a tattooist second, is one of the artists that calls it home. Well, my name is Susanna Salick. People know me as Susie. I'm a new tattoo artist in Kitchener, Waterloo. Well, I enjoy minimalism. Um, anything small, delicate, um, lots of detail kind of a thing. Um, but it's not, I wouldn't consider myself as, you know, specializing in it. Um, something I'd love to specialize in that I'm looking forward to is uh, portrait tattoos. Why, why are you wanting to make that change? I find it more challenging, portraits. Um, I enjoy it, it takes more time, and it's just that expression that people get when you do something that's very meaningful to them. So, so my name is Sue Ventura. I have ten. Done by her. Small done ones. Done by her? Yep. And the ones that she does, are, I get my kids to draw little pictures and so she's been filling in little pictures that they do, little doodles and things like that. She's a fantastic artist, like she's just amazing. She shows, like if you see some of her work on Instagram, she's absolutely stunning. And she's got a great personality, she makes the job fun. Um, and she takes her time to make sure that what you want is going to be exactly, like it's going to turn out exactly how you like it. Is there like a really memorable tattoo that you like that's one of your favorite that you've done. I had a client come to me with um, very just odd things and nothing kind of made sense. Just, it was very memorable because it took so long to plan out, but at the end it was just such a beautiful product. If you want to check out more of Susie's work, you can find her on Instagram at Tattoos by Susie. Thanks for joining us this week on Try Inc. Eric, why are you listening to music? We are in the middle of a show. Eric. Huh? Oh, hey. Sorry. We're in the middle of a show. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot. My bad. I was just trying to figure out which was better, 90s rock or 90s hip hop. Obviously, 90s rock. Well, that's subjective. How dare you? Well, maybe we should go for a third opinion on this and check out Next Level Nostalgia. Welcome back to another episode of Next Level Nostalgia. Today, we're at The Beat Goes On, and we're going to talk to Boyan Vincic and Joel Rush about 90s hip-hop versus 90s rock and roll. Which, uh, which side are you guys on? Obviously, rock and roll. Hip-hop, man. We're going to give some song titles, and you guys have to go find the album. And whoever finds the album first gets the point. Whoever gets the most points wins. Your first song name will be My Name Is. Your second song name and your third song name, Forgot About Dre. Your first song name is Midnight Train. Your second song name is Hellraiser. And your third song name is Teen Spirit. We'll see who the better man is. Challenge begins in three, two, one. Good luck. Right here. I'm sure you Okay, dropping everything. Wonderful. Oh, I'm looking for N. Okay. N for the root there. Cream. Let's get it. And it's K. That's not right. Stop dropping stuff there. 2001. Got them all. Am I correct? The I, man right here, he is correct. We're still going to give Joel his time to find okay. his album. But Good luck, buddy. He's already done? The plan's already done. He's just killing it. He's everything killing was it, was it all next to each other? <laughs> but you knew where the albums were from, right? Yeah. I didn't. He's officially in the Aussie section. <laughs> I found it. What albums did you end up finding? We got 36 Chambers, Wu Tang, classic. And then forgot about Dre, 2001. And Slim Shady LP, My Name Is. Perfect. Now, over here, what did you find? Uh, we got Nirvana's Nevermind, uh, Ozzy Osbourne's No More Tears, and Steve Miller's Wind River. Perfect. 
Thank you so much for the Pain and Game crew for coming in and helping us out. And also thank you very much to uh, The Beat Goes On for hosting this challenge. But we'll catch you next time. Speaking of rap and rock and roll, our next segment includes a rapper that mixes 80s rock, jazz, and gospel hip-hop into his work. Wow, that sounds cool. You guys better stay tuned. We got PM Punch the Rapper and producer on today's segment of Wrap It Up. What's up? I'm Morgan. Welcome back to Wrap It Up. Today we got a rapper and a producer, PM Punch, a.k.a. Diggy Doom. Hell yeah. So, uh, what would you say uh, are some of your musical influences? Uh, probably Mac Miller, uh, Tyler the Creator, of uh, Chance, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what, what kind of inspiration do you take from them? How do you try and weave that into your production and into your lyricism? Um, into my production, I kind of take their, like with Chance, I use the big gospel chords and stuff and try to integrate that in. Uh, lyricism wise, I really like Mac's like kind of relaxed flow. So I try to use that, but keep the lyricism on point, like kind of make the, the uh, lines mean something. Absolutely. Um, so would you say that gospel is one of the main genres that you try and sample, or are there other genres outside of hip hop that you uh, weave into your sound? Yeah, like uh, gospel, kind of 80s rock too. Uh, I like to use a lot of jazz as well, stuff like that, kind of funk as well. So do you have anything dropping soon? Yeah, um, I got a third album coming out. Uh, hip Hop Legendary 3, 3 up, 3 up, Legendary to 3 re. Gotta replace the H's with the 3's, you know. It's kinda yeah, oh. True. Oh, that's, all right. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's dropping sooner rather than later. Check my Insta, um, Punch PM, I guess. All right. Uh, well, we're gonna go record a freestyle, or I guess you got, I, you got like a, you got a stencil down? I got something, yeah. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. All right. Let's hit it. Gang. Yeah. Hey. Boom. Yes. Bumble. 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 Hardcore on Rogers TV. Hardcore on Rogers TV. Jumping on my feet. Hey. Don your ass in a dress. Don your ass in a dress. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of Constoka Connected. As always, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind-the-scenes pictures and content. All right. Well, we better get out of here, so we'll see you next time. 